it's it's six o'clock. I'm going to call the October 20th, 2020 uh, special meeting of the CV Fiber Governing Board to order. Uh, I've started the recording. Uh, are there any additions or changes to the agenda? Uh, a couple, yeah. Um, first, um, Tim and I talked a little bit about this, but I'm not sure if there's any sort of a shared file storage that we have that multiple people have access to where we can have all of our data in one place. Um, and also as sort of a backup, you know, in case someone has an accident, you know, we can not lose files. Um, and then the other thing would be uh, approval of the October 13th, 2020 minutes. Okay. And discussion of file storage. Okay. We'll yeah. <clears throat> we'll, we'll put those. Uh, we'll put those at the end, Chuck. If we have time. Yeah. Oh, I, sorry, I thought you were calling for comments on file storage. So. No, no. We'll, we're gonna we're gonna I'll, put that at the end. I'll hold my tongue. Okay. Any other anything other to add to the agenda? Okay. Moving right along. Uh, Siobhan reports that it's uh, Ray, it's beef stew. <laughs> All right. Uh, up, update on RFP responses. Tim, you want to take that one? Yes. So, um, as uh, many of you know, we did send out a request for capabilities and interest. Uh, we sent out to 18 different entities. And we received back seven, um, I would say, worthy responses. Uh, those included First Light, Hub 66, Waitsfield and Champlain Valley Telecom, Kingdom Fiber and Cloud Alliance, um, ValleyNet, GWI, and Tilson. So, um, you know, just as a as a brief. Uh, kind of background or, or summation. It really included asking them about what their capabilities were, um, separating out the fixed wireless from the FTTP options, and then probably more importantly, where um, their interest lies in either talking to us further or future partnering. And I'd say it's uh, certainly um, going to be helpful information as we continue through um, you know talking about the opportunities who's out there and what they can do for us I think this will be a, a guiding um, certainly a guiding uh, finding to uh, to helping uh, with those uh, with those future partnerships so I have uh, sent the kind of summation <clears throat> in a pretty busy sped spreadsheet through the business development and then uh, subsequent to Jeremy Matt and uh, Jeremy Henson and I, you know, trying to figure out a repository where we can share, where we can put the uh, reports and all the uh, responses where people can dig in a little further. Cause mine is just a, a kind of a summary document. However, uh, I do think it's uh, gonna be, you know, kind of invaluable to, uh, to, uh, the future and, and uh, what those uh, what those opportunities are. All right, and so so the next step is for the business development committee to chew on that. Is that right? Yeah, I'd say yes. As you know, as we're uh, furthering down the road, I think that you know it lands in uh, it seems the logical place is business development to start to dig in a little deeper, roll up the sleeves, and understand where what what the next steps might be out of those. Uh, those uh, findings and then uh, taking the next steps, which some of them include, you know, things that are going to be discussed tonight that David will bring forth probably. Okay, sounds good. Any questions for Tim? <clears throat> okay, moving along. Um, Vita loan update. Uh, Tim, you had also had a conversation with um, Yun Young at Vita. Correct. Um, yeah, so uh, In Young and I have been going back and forth. Um, so I think things are progressing as far as, uh, you know, peeling back the onion on what the expectations are for the uh, broadband loan that we'll be looking to apply for in the near future. So I've been in uh, 
you know, kind of continued discussions of understanding their expectations and then subsequently being able to have some clear understanding of what we need to do to put together the most favorable, complete and holistic package to uh, put us in a, you know, in a, in a strong position to receive the uh, loan funds that uh, will be the ask in, uh, in that future. So, um, and, and we still, you know, continue to have dialogue and, and uh, it does look promising. She's looked through things and certainly no red flags. And, and I think, you know, from the work that needs to happen, it's, um, I think, you know, things are, are progressing. Certainly the feasibility study and the business plan work that was done by Inter Isle is, is going to help. And then um, some continued work on the financial front and then just kind of wrapping it, putting it all together for a specific ask as far as with the, uh, you know, the phase one, what the specific ask is and getting a little more uh, detailed as far as how far um, things will go, um, whether it's the blue route or, or beyond and, and getting uh, pretty specific so that they can have uh, something to, to consider and, and uh, hopefully approve. Ray? Uh, I guess my question is, do we have a, a goal, a deadline, a date, you know, like by 1 January, we're going to have submitted uh, what needs to be submitted, uh, the things that we need to execute between now and then, what's our, what's our timeline again, what's the work plan to get there? Uh, I can talk about my thoughts, or Tim, you can take a crack at this. Yeah, I guess I, I, I defer more to you, I guess, Jeremy, as far as the, you know, the time expectations, it obviously is, uh, you know, depending on the amount of work and, and getting the T's crossed and the I's dotted, but uh, certainly, you know, I think your opinion would weigh heavily. So my, my instinct is that I, I would like to see us have an application in by the end of the year. Um, I think one of the, one of the things that's going to hold us back, that's going to make this, um, that we, that's going to slow us down is that we still need to get the financial audit or the financial review done. That is number one. Number two is that we need to make sure that we have commitment from the state that they're going to provide the matching funds for the loan. Um, I, I don't know that that's going to be onerous. Um, I, I don't really know, even know what their process is. That just you know that just came out of the budget that was signed. So. Um, those are those are the two main things. You know, in addition to simply formatting the application and making sure that Vita has what what they want, but um, you know the the enabling statute for or the, the the bill that created the loan program said that Vita would be deferring substantially to the advice of uh, the Department of Public Service, and if they you know if they approve with if they approve our plan and they think it's reasonable. I think we have a much better chance then of securing the, the Vita loan. And Ray, you want to follow follow up a bit? Yeah. So it sounds like the critical path might be this financial plan, audit, whatever. Uh, what's the status of that particular element then? So uh, Tim, you had talked to Batchelder, and uh, I think we had kind of left that in stasis for the, for the moment. I don't know if you have any other updates or, or any information that you need for that. No, um, it's, you know, I'd say it's in the works of understanding what they need and, and uh, getting getting things moving along there. But, um, you know, I don't think it's going to be terribly onerous, just given, <clears throat> you know, the the uh, extent of our financials. So it, it uh, is really checking checking a box, but uh, it's a necessary thing for uh, getting the audit done, though. So it just it just sounds like to me if we want to get something in by let's say one January that this first bit uh, needs to be contracted for arranged for by one November uh, to give them you know, three weeks including a holiday et cetera et cetera a couple of holidays in there to get that done so can we can we get uh, them under contract by one November and it's twenty October now. Yeah, I, I certainly think that's reasonable. And we've been discussing, you know, kind of the expectations. It's just a matter of getting um, kind of the financial information together. And that's been a little uh, what what uh, we need to work on so that they have something to audit and, and look at from a financial perspective. So, 
but yes, I think that's reasonable. Yeah. The, the thing, in, in my opinion, that's going to make it go really fast is that the number of our transactions, you can almost count on two hands. Exactly. So um, right. it's really, right. there's really not much to it. Right. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping they're able to, to come in, take a look at it. And I think they will probably spend more time writing up um, advice about process, you know, fi financial processes and, you know, how, um, how, how we approve bills and manage invoices and whatnot. Um, but even so, um, you know, the, the, the complexity is really low for what we're asking them to do. So it should be a, should be a pretty short, you know, financial review that we can then provide to Vita and, and move along. But yeah, I, I, I think having that turned around by, by one December would not, would not be, not be a big deal. Go ahead, Ray. It sounds like the next bit has to do with getting a commitment from the state to do the matching funds. And uh, what's the process for that? And, and who, who, is, who are the parties that are working through that? I don't know if there is even a process for that yet. <clears throat> the, the, the department's working through all of the, CARE, the CARES Act stuff, and I don't know that they see that as a, as a front burner item at the moment. I don't know, uh, David or Ken or anybody who has any other visibility in there, if you have any thoughts. I think you're correct, Jeremy. I think they're so busy trying to figure out the CARES thing that they haven't even gotten to the loan matching money process. That's my understanding as well. Okay. So, um, yeah, maybe in the next few weeks, you know, uh, I'll shoot an email over to Rob Fish and ask, or I actually could probably just ask him at the, uh, the uh, Vicuda meeting. You know what, no, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna call him directly. Um, because it because it, it would be good to know if the, if there are things that we can do essentially to facilitate their work, um, and then bringing that up for discussion with uh, with, with Vicuda is, is it's just gonna I think we'll probably get sidetracked. So I would rather just have Rob one on one so that we can find out what does he need from us, how can we support them. I mean, it's, it's, it sounds kind of weird, but you know we're what what we can do to help them help us. I think is uh, is going to be a mutual a mutual win somewhere around you know one to ten november they're going to realize they can't do anything else they're dead in the water with regard to the cares act and so they have to turn to the next the next things they're, they're out of the cares act stuff and so that's when they'll start picking up i think our bit but i think you're right i think if we could get in touch with them now and see what we can do to help them it would be, it'd be useful for us Ray, I wish that were the case, but um, they are their their calendar is full until the end of the year with care stuff because there's still a lot of unspent money that they have responsibility for. They have to make a pitch to the governor's office and the joint fiscal committee about how to utilize that. So I, I they, if you think November they're not going to be taking a sigh of relief on November first. And they're also going to be um, they're going to be chasing down all their oversight roles through the end of the year. There's going to be providers that have been written checks, and they're going to be reviewing and looking at all the paperwork for that to see, you know, did you know provider X that got the CARES Act money? They're going to be chasing them down right till December 20th, I expect. But if I can sort of bend Rob's ear and see if we can essentially design the process, if we can say, here's our application for Vita, and can we just get a written commitment of some, of some form saying that the state has established this fund to do this. And when that, um, I mean, and if that understanding, if, essentially if everybody understands that, then we can, al we can almost skip the process if Vita's willing to recognize that the state is backing us for that 10%. So then it's just going to be us making a very concrete uh, pitch for what what we'd be doing with, with the proceeds. Any other thoughts on uh, Vita loan process or otherwise? Okay, moving along. Uh, grant funding update and CARES funding options. Uh, I'm going to kick this over to you, David, if you got some uh, updates for us. That's kind of a broad agenda item, but I think we've got a lot of stuff going on. You're muted. So I just got an email back from Rob saying that 
they should have something so that we can apply tomorrow. So he, uh, I originally had sent him the draft of what we we agreed at the last meeting on project top project items and budgets. And he came back with some pretty good feedback about how to make it uh, rationally acceptable. So we can, we can, we have to revise that a little bit. Um, in my opinion, the um, making this happen in the time frame that we've got, which is basically two months plus, it's really two months. Um, and there's a lot to make all the things we said we we're going to do happen. Some of them require getting, you know, contractors to help us. Um, we don't have a formal bidding process that I know of, unless Tim does. And given the short term turnaround, I'm going to recommend if we find somebody who we think is competent to do some of these tasks, we have a vetting committee and, and agree to hire somebody because I don't, you know, waiting three weeks to hire, you know, put out a bid and hiring somebody to help us with marketing materials and, and outreach and, and canvassing, it's going to kill the program and kill us trying to get it done. But I, I look for the board's advice on that. Um, I think the business development committee and the communications committee could probably handle this. Um, but I, I want to make sure the board was aware of that. Um, the other thing that comes into it, I mean, we have two, a, a number of projects in there that say we'll connect X number of people through uh, EC Fiber Valley Net and through Waitsville Telecom, Champlain Telecom and uh, Cloud Alliance. And I'm not sure we can pull all that off in the, in the two months that we have especially based on the discussion that we had last meeting about uh, you know if we if we're putting up our money or the state's money that becomes our money to establish these connections the infrastructure should be ours and you know i have not talked to wait till telecom about that or ec fiber but i think ec fiber is probably an easier one to deal with that um but wait till telecom it could be a you know could be a um what do you call it a no-go based on what we'd like to do with our investments but we can we'll we'll go over that bridge when we have to um i would like some help on that and i see that greg's not on the meeting tonight but i think greg would be a great person to help with that um but that's sort of my update on that ken ken has prepared a little document that he shared with tim and myself on next steps to get things going and i don't know if ken you want to talk about that or not well, um, I can just talk about it in that there are a number of steps. So we'll start with we'll start with the partnerships with either either or um, CV Fiber, I mean EC Fiber, ValleyNet, uh, Champlain, Waitsfield Telecom. We're going to have to negotiate with them, and you know the the actual content of our negotiation is going to be have to be something that we do in executive session. But I laid out in that the elements that are a part of our negotiation. And while I know, David, that, there, that you said that there's a general sentiment that we need to own the infrastructure, we need to be clear that that would seem to me a very, very, very difficult position on which to um, work with either of those entities. Rather, build ourselves a future um, positive relationship and make sure they get us stuff for making sure that we can cover those two towns completely um, and maybe provide us a leasing revenue or, or revenue, uh, a uh, what's the term? Um, anyway, some sort of money after we give them the money to build. Anyway, there's a series of those topics. And as you said, yeah, we got two months. So if <laughs> I think we really should establish a negotiating team, wrestle with some of those issues um in, in the next two weeks um so there's that and then similarly with the canvassing and i and i think it helps in terms of promoting the department approving it part of our canvassing is not just getting information from the potential customers but it's getting information to them to them regards yeah. to this emergency because this is emergency funding so the extent that we can link them to some of the programs that are available for them, that's a way I think we could promote that, yes, this is an emergency use of the funds. And by the way, yeah, we establish a relationship and we build a customer base. But again, and it gets to the content issue. We need to come up with the content. And actually related to that, in that our 
first discussion about the, the loan, at some point in the very near future, we need to come up with a pricing package. Um, a pricing package that's the basis of, of the revenue piece for the loan um, and our communication with potential customers. So again, in a ver fairly short time, going through Fred Goldstein's product, um, making sure that, that we have some concrete tables of if you're getting it at this speed and that um, with any, if, you know, I don't know about data capture or any of that, but this is what a price is. We need to come up with that. We need to come up with that. And, and, and it doesn't have to be perfect, but it, it does have to, but people aren't going to be making decisions based on vague, oh, we'll get you some service. So and so anyway, that that's what I laid out, and I didn't lay out all the steps for what doing the fixed wireless that? piece. What's that? Oh, a twisty light pole. Oh, oh sorry. Um, so yeah, I just put it in the document, but it's just to you know we, we need to get the uh, subgroups to really start addressing those issues in a very very short time frame. Right. So um, with regard to the marketing, the canvassing, and all that kind of stuff, it seems like we need to wind up with a, uh, an RFP that goes out or a sole source thing. In anticipation of state funding, uh, we want to hire somebody. But the important bit there is the statement of work, which frankly is the, um, uh, the one that uh, we've had some difficulty with actually defining what that job is. And that's what we need to work on is that statement of work. Once we get that statement of work done, Tim can handle the rest of that with regard to getting that out. I, my understanding of the conversation that we had with regard to the um, um, Waitsfield Telecom and the other one, blah, 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 UC Fiber, wasn't that it had to do with the infrastructure, it had to do with who owned the customers. And at the end of the day, we own the customers. I don't frankly care about the, uh, you know, the, the wires and all the rest of that stuff. We can lease that part and we can build that into the cost of the, um, of the service. But the customers was the important bit. And so, um, and Tim needs to be in the center of that conversation, the dialogue with those, uh, with those entities. And maybe there's one or two others who have the kind of the technical details, but it's the customer bit. I see David has his hand up. What do you mean by customer? The, the revenue? The subscriber, the subscriber, yeah. So the subscriber revenue. Yeah, yeah, they, they belong to us. Okay. I, I don't, the, the wires, I don't care about so much. We, we'll lease those. No, I think there's probably some mixed opinion about that, but anyway. Okay. Well, we should, I mean, we, we, we have the time tonight. We should probably get those questions answered rather than just assuming things are going to move forward. Um, <clears throat> and we just assign it to some negotiator and then it just gets worked out in some <laughs> smoky back room. But Michael, why don't you um, let us know what you think? Um, there's lots of ways to go, but um, I would anticipate that most providers will not agree to either the position that CB Fiber gets the customer or that CB Fiber, um, what was the first idea? I already forgot. The subscribers owns, owns Fiber. Owns the infrastructure. The infrastructure. I, I think that what's likely, I, I think the phrase you were looking for, David, was deal breaker. Um, I think they will be deal breakers for Waitsfield Champlain Valley. I don't know about EC Fiber, but I think I don't think Waitsfield Champlain. You were shaking your head, Jeremy. You've got I, inside. I, in. I, I, I've I've sat in meetings. I mean, who, who else was with me? It's the, uh, Andy from Cabot was with me when we met with them. Gosh, a year and a half ago, and when we talked about the feasibility of us doing development and then potentially being the operator of us owning the customers and us owning the infrastructure, they said we could probably make that happen. And EC Fiber has also explicitly said this. Yeah, they've been pretty, they were pretty cooperative, I thought, or willing to work. Okay. Part. I'm surprised, but that's that's interesting. It's really not what I expected from them, but okay. Um, the, but the alternative way to do it is um, Ken suggested revenue sharing. Um, there's a bunch of different methodologies of, of sharing responsibility and revenue and so forth in these things. So I, I guess that goes back to the, the smoky room negotiating committee. I don't know. Well, and I, and I think it also is going to depend a lot on this this body's um, philosophy of what how they imagine that these public resources 
being expended? Do they are they expended for the development of public infrastructure? Or are they develop are they expended just to get people service? I mean, there's and there's nuances and shades of uh, philosophy in there as well. But I mean, I think I think we ought to um, I think we ought to stake our claim in how you know what the parameters are of you know that we're going to going to work with because if if the if the board's opinion is that if we're going to expend these state these state funds and we must own the fiber we can walk in there and say we can say that you know in terms of like negotiating tactics that's something that we should probably keep for an executive session or delegate to you know a a team but i think that getting our vision and getting our um philosophy here and getting it now uh, apologies but you know I think, again we're at the point where you just have to make decisions right yeah so my right. recollection was, was something like right. that um we were going to have we were going to get the state money we were going to hire them to build it out we were going to hire them to operate it for a finite period of time until we could assume the operations but we owned all the revenue with regard to the subscription and whatever their operating costs were, we were going to be paying them out of that revenue and perhaps other revenue, uh, if that's not a kind of a break-even number. Obviously, it's the total infrastructure, and the total subscription is going to allow us to pay for all of this stuff. So, uh, but at that some point in time, whether it's 18 months or four years down the road, we're going to wind up assuming responsi operational responsibility for it. In the interim, we're going to pay them to operate it. And we're going to pay them out of that, those revenues and other revenues. And so our, I think our negotiating position is going in that we negotiate. We own the, we're, we're hiring you to do this work. We own the infrastructure. We own the, we own the customers. And you can operate it and we'll pay you a fee until we assume responsibility for it. Now, take the deal or don't take the deal. Any other thoughts? I mean, so so Ray has a proposal. Um, Michael's suggestion was that that's not terribly likely to fly. Uh, so Henry, you had a hand up. We'll do Henry then Chuck. Yeah, I guess um, you know, having just reviewed um, the impact that um, the um, connectivity initiative has had on all of our towns, which I I sent to Jeremy and to David, which looks at the percentage of the eligible premises that were satisfied by the connectivity initiatives to the broadband, commercial broadband providers, unless we retain some sort of ownership, we're just, again, contributing to our own demise. Um, it's just like, it's just like the connectivity initiative where they had to get it to people, and and you know in some towns it was forty percent of the eligible people in that town that we no longer, you know, we're going to have an uphill battle to try to get them. So, I I don't want to add to that, exacerbate that situation. Okay, Chuck. Henry, you made my point better than I ever would have. Thank you. Yeah, okay. I mean, if, if you want, I can send that link to the um, Tableau workbook to the whole board. I also wanted to send it to Rob Fish, but I wasn't going to do that without <laughs> checking with you guys first. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think it's worthwhile so that he at least understands the uh, okay. the context. I mean, and and how we can kind of interpret some of the results of that funding. I just. David? Yeah, Henry, when I looked at your numbers, I, I mean, a lot of those services that were provided don't are not fiber to the premise. I mean, they're pretty much all fixed wireless rates. So the speeds that they're getting are not high. But no, you made a good point. And it, it'll be a little, bit uphill, a little bit of an uphill thing to recapture some people who are happy with what they get. Well, I mean, if you listen to the commercial providers, they say no one needs more than 25.3 anyhow. So. Yeah. Those got four kids working at home. <laughs> Michael. So um, not all the providers say that, Henry. Um, <laughs> what we're what we're what we're saying is we're we're happy that we can get twenty five or better to 
to a bunch of customers in central Vermont. Um, but we expect that fiber will eventually overbuild and come to the fore. And this is this is the CARES Act funding, from my point of view, was was to bridge the gap to take advantage of some funding that a windfall the state had to try to help get people able to go to school and have telehealth and all those things. I, I, I'm absolutely certain that the department doesn't want to undermine the CUDs. They respected every single CUD objection that was submitted, every single one. They never once overruled a single objection. And so I, I, I don't feel that we should see that so much as a threat. Um, the other point I wanted to make going back to the, the earlier part of the discussion is that um, I'm somewhat convinced by things people have said in the room that that um, if we're providing the money to providers to do things, that we do have a certain legitimate claim to ownership one way or another. Um, the other thing you can do is, is in exchange for giving up some ownership of one aspect or another, whether it's the infrastructure or the customer, or the revenue, is to um, use the leverage to get them to build other places that we're not funding that would cover, you know, for example, in the town of Moortown to finish out Moortown, that kind of thing. We discussed that at this development committee meeting the other day. So I just want to get that out for the board to hear. Or okay. Right. So uh, Ray, before we get back to you, I'm back to this Valley proposal. That's all. I, I would I would like to hear from some other folks that uh, just hearing if you have uh, opinions about this, because um, I would like to have this to a vote at some point, unless we can come to a consensus and we don't need to vote. But uh, Siobhan, what do you think? I'm trying to understand what we're trying to make a decision about because up until now i feel like we've been talking about well in some places we may own the infrastructure but in other places we're going to lease the infrastructure and but in all of this my understanding is the customers would be ours and that we would have an operator that was doing our bidding along those lines but i thought that's where we were leaning. So maybe I'm, I've missed something. I'm, I feel like I missed something. So, so let, let me see if I can provide some context. So this is care, still CARES Act funding. And we approached, um, we approached what, three, three providers, David, right? EC Fiber, Waitsfield Champlain Valley, and uh, Cloud Alliance slash Kingdom Fiber <clears throat> to provide services by the end of the year so we would be going to the state for the funding and we would be asking them to build. And we have in the past said that we are going to, you know, our kind of main thrust was for us to own, to own the infrastructure and to own the customers and to contract with an operator. This is, um, I admit this is slightly different than the shape of the project that we're looking at for Vita funding. And with, I think with that, that definitely, I, I don't know how we could have any other formula for that. That said, um, we have an opportunity and there is a fair bit of money here that's coming from the state and we still need to decide uh, the, the parameters that we are going to ask a handful of people or you know, uh, a couple board members to actually go and have that conversation. And then when they have that conversation, they need to know what's what's possible. So if we are going to plant the flag in the sand and say that, you know, this is funding that the state is giving to us that is explicitly, explicitly for CUDs and, and thus public infrastructure. Are we then going to make sure that we own the fiber? Are we going to make sure that we own the subscribers? We need to decide this today for this particular bucket of money. And I saw Josh, thank you for the comment in the, in the chat there. Um, and uh, again, before I get back to Chuck and Ray, I would still like to hear from some more people, um, but I, I do have, um, I do have you, Ray and Chuck in the, in the pipeline. So, um, Jeremy, Alan, Frank, any of you have 
Frank, want to start us off? Just something short and sweet. If you don't own the subscribers, you don't own the revenue. Fair enough. Jeremy or Alan, any other anything else you want to add to that? I'm I'm just going to go down through everybody, give you a chance. Jeremy. Yeah, this is Alan. So, so what I'm trying to understand is what we have to accomplish by December 20th so we are not at any risk for having received money but haven't provided the service that we guaranteed. I'm trying to just understand the risk here to us. Is that am I am I misstating what is a potential risk or could it be that we actually after December 20th could owe the federal government a certain sum of money because either through something we weren't able to do or something that any of the three providers we've talked about couldn't do, we are now stuck with having to pay back that money. Well, I, I think we would certainly have to have that just like the state has with us and it's our contractual obligation to the state, we would have to have whoever we contract with also on the hook for that. So no, this has got to be a pass through risk of if somebody's building something for us and we've written them a check, we'd be darn sure that if if anybody that's getting money is got to be delivering. So I, I think that's just got to be the T's that we cross and the I's that we dot with the lawyers when we put this agreement together. And some of the parameters of this agreement, you know, uh, David has already been exploring somewhat, um, but this, this is actually, you know, in the, sh in the form of the, you know, the memorandum of understanding with WEC, you know, that's where we're thinking about, you know, if WEC is building infrastructure, there's going to be sort of a, um, a similar sort of, of arrangement, you know, who, who's doing what, I guess, is, is what the, is what the answer that has to be, the question that has to be answered. So are we on the hook? Yes. But if we're going to spend any of this money, somebody else has to be on the hook um, with us as well. And so, well, I don't, I don't oh, think that, I don't think that we can completely get off the hook. And if we have to pay the government $120,000 as of December 21st, I, I, I think we're going to be in a very bad position. I, this seems. So. Like a lot of risk. Alan. Okay, so so as Alan, you're 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 breaking up pretty significantly. So so let, let me see if I can if I can summarize. The, you, you're you're concerned about the risk of going after this this next bucket of CARES Act funding. Okay, it looks like we just lost him. Oh, maybe not. So this and and we we did talk about about the risk of this and the risk of this is similar to the risk that we are looking at for the other project, the wireless project that we decided was too risky and the timeline too compressed. Um, Ray, Ray, Chuck, and Henry, I, I, I do see you. I want to give everybody a chance to, to weigh in before we come back to you. That was you, kind of the, 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 the main three sponsors of this uh, line of thought. So, Ken. Yeah, I, I like to think of this as a, a sequence of, of discussions and decisions. So, in terms of Alan's last point, we're going to have a contract with the Public Service Department if indeed they agree first to provide us the funds, then they will also have to provide us the contract language. And they all also, they're ultimately on the hook. So yes, we are gonna have to make sure that they are comfortable with the level of build that, that we've accomplished by December. But I don't think that stops us today from moving forward, and 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 it is related to earlier discussions. We need to have the negotiation discussions with the the partners, to and and yes, this will always be a a factor that that we can't resolve right away, but is there that we want to pursue the funds, we want to have a partner to help us spend those funds, and yes, we're not going to take the funds unless we satisfy the the terms of the contract. And yes, we're going to therefore have to do the contract. So uh, the point is very important, but it's not a point that we decide tonight. Um, it's the point we decide before we sign a contract with the Public Service Department. So, uh, I, 
understand your perspective, Ken. I think to a certain extent, I have to respectfully disagree that if even if we don't agree on the shape of the contract specifics, I think we at least have to understand the parameters broadly. And that if this board is saying that we want to own the fiber, then we need to go into negotiations with that as an expectation. And we can sort of work out the, you know, the smaller bits based around that. And maybe there's some, you know, some give that's there, but I would like to hear from the board um, first so that we understand how we're, how we can even go into those negotiations. Because if we don't know what we want, going into a negotiation in that position is a terrible, terrible position to be in. Um, so I see some comments from Josh and Andy and Tom. Uh, Jeremy? So I guess I'm kind of going back and forth. I mean, I, I think it would be great to own the fiber and the customers, but personally, I would also be okay with just getting people connected and using that money as leverage to do something else. I would be, a, I mean, not that I'm a voting person, but I would be opposed to um, just handing them the money to say, connect those people. We need to get something out of it, but if we can get something of value out of it, that puts us in a position later on, either gets rid of a very difficult place for us to build or, you know, gets, a town built out for us. I mean, that's kind of our goal, especially if we can get some of these places built, that would be hard for us to build, you know, like part of more town, you know, I mean, giving them money to just build the densest area and we don't own anything that I don't agree with, but if we could get something else out, then I'd be okay with that. And the other thing is what, I mean, has, has the state weighed in on what they would require? Do they, they're giving this to CUDs. Do they require that we own the customers, that we own the fiber? Have they, has the department weighed in on this at all? David, do you have any sense of that? I don't have any sense of the ownership because I know Kingdom Fiber is doing something totally, uh, Kingdom Broadband, NEK Broadband is doing something totally different. I mean, they're, they're just looking for people to build things and, let them run it as I understand it. Um, uh, Michael probably knows more on that one than I do. But the, uh, you know, the department isn't, and the goal of the COVID money is to get people serviced by the end of the year. And I'm not sure they care one way or the other how it gets done. They may, but I haven't heard that. Okay. Uh, Lowry, I saw you had your hand up before. Do you have something you want to add? Yeah, hey there. I'm um, uh, here in Middlesex stepping in for um, Bill Hayek for the next few months. Um, I feel, you know, being new to this, I, I'm just looking at this the discussion about owning the customers or not is, I think there's a lot of value in, in approaching the customers and establishing a relationship that they see as long-term and, and that the, the, the short-term fixed wireless is, is just a stopgap until the fiber comes and not to have them see this as just fixed wireless as a, as a service that they can get now and maybe next year they'll get Comcast, but that they're actually signing up for, you know, a, a public utility that, that we're all invested in and that this is a stepping stone to fiber. So, right. so, so to be clear, the projects that we're talking about, at least two of them, are fiber. So we're talking about other parties providing fiber to the premises by the end of the year. Um, okay. So Thank at you. least, you know, Waitsfield, Champlain Valley, and EC Fiber. Anyway, we're looking at specific um, towns where they might be building out. Honestly, not not even that many houses, oh. but it, you know, it gets some folks connected, which is, you know great for those folks and but it does like you said it starts building that connection it starts building that long-term relationship um all right um anything from let's see who haven't we heard from um john morris or uh, katharina not from me i'm just listening i'm really okay. new to this things <laughs> <laughs> thank you any thoughts john
No, I'm sorry. I feel like I'm pretty much out of the loop, so I'm just trying to catch up. Okay. Fair enough. All right. So, uh, Ray? Yeah, so two bits. Uh, one is that this whole conversation has to do with what we are going to be telling uh, our negotiating team, who has not been selected yet, as to what our position is. So this whole thing should be an executive session, number one. The second bit is that what we're planning to do, frankly, is execute design, build, operate, maintain contracts with delivery deadlines for these contractors. Uh, there's some design issues here. What equipment we're we going to use, et cetera, et cetera. It, the, you know, it's, it's, if we're going to plan on doing something, the entire 20 member community that we own, that we're responsible for. Okay, so these are design, build, operate, maintain contracts. And they're for a finite period of time. And who, let me ask the question, who sets the rate? Who sets the rate? Does the operator set the rate or do we set the rate? If you think we set the rate, we own the customers, we fund the projects. If you think they set the rate so they can get paid for their operation, for example, and maintenance and profit and all that kind of stuff, is that the direction you want us to go in or we're setting the rate? So if we're so, setting the rate, okay. So so there's there's some calls in the chat for us to go into executive session, which I think I'd like to hold off on for a little while anyways. Um, I, I think the the vision here and David and the other folks who were sort of crafting this um, this last, you know, this this crack at this last bit of money. I think the idea here was not for us to engineer it, not for us to design it, not for us to select the the technology, but simply for us to pay another, you know, another provider to do this for us. Now, that would mean that if EC Fiber is building, presumably they're going to do it in the EC Fiber way. If it's Waitsfield Champlain Valley, they're going to be doing it in the Waitsfield Champlain Valley way. We can't do a design build negotiation and have anything done. Well, we won't even get negotiate. We don't even get the negotiations done by the end of December. It will simply not happen. So, and they will not be able to incorporate that into their network and turn people on by the end of the year. It's just impossible. So if we're saying, hey, EC Fiber, we might want you to go into Roxbury, then we can say, here's where we want you to go. How they do that, or maybe they have a slightly better way of doing it, and they just do it. But that chunk of infrastructure, I mean, from my perspective, again, this is my perspective and not everybody's, that that chunk of their network then is not really their network. It's connected to their network. That's ours, but it's it's our customers, and they essentially brand those customers with our name. Um, I have uh, Chuck, Henry, then Michael. So first, first thing I'd like to say is I was going to make the same comment about executive session. Um, when we're talking about the specifics of negotiation points, um, where we even want to draw the line and taking a stance on that, I think it gives away our negotiating leverage to even be talking about that and, and seeing what sort of board consensus looks like. Um, so that's, that's point one. Um, point two is, I think speaking specifically about Moortown, that the project proposed is detrimental to our ability to roll out future routes as defined in the feasibility studies. Um, it happens that the route proposed is along one of the more dense portions of Moortown, if you can call it dense, uh, but it, it is dense by Moortown standards with the exception of our villages, of which we have a couple. And, and so it really concerns me to give money to wire that section of Moortown without any leverage being on the table that, that makes it possible for us to force build out to the much more remote fringes of the community. Uh, and that, you know, that's what we've seen the commercial players do all this time, to Henry's point. Um, and so I, I, you know, I think, 
I, I have a more detailed opinion on where I think lines of leverage may be acceptable or not, and I will not share those unless we go into executive session. Uh, but in the meantime, my general stance is we need to do what is right for Moortown as a whole and not what is right for one tiny section of Moortown. And in particular, since you know this this is actually in the middle of one of the feasibility routes, I won't specify which, but because it's in the middle of one of the feasibility routes, it, I think it actually uh, uh, hinders the overall route and not just Moortown. My, my two cents. Okay. Uh, I have Henry, then Michael. Um, so I wanted to um, piggyback something Frank said. Um, and, and uh, you know, I was very much of the opinion that we need to own the infrastructure, but then I started thinking about it. And if we own the customers, you know, there's a, a real advantage in terms of the Vita loan, you know, so, you know, there are different um, asset classes. And so, if we go into a Vita loan and say we own this fiber, well, so what? Uh, but if we go in there and we say we expect this revenue, then we're actually, you know, providing some real value to the cash flow projection based on the fact that we expect income from these people that are going to be connected. So in terms of the Vita loan, I think it's more important to own the customers than it is to own the infrastructure. Um, the other thing, though, is more general, and that is that um, I, I'm really wondering, I think part of what we need to decide is what capabilities we want to have, if not now, but in the future. You know, in the future, what do we want to do? Do we want to build people? And do we want to provide customer support? Do we want to provide operations? Blah, blah, blah. You know, and based on that, we're then thinking about, um, you know, how we're going to go about getting into these contractual arrangements with people. Because right now we have no capability at all, and we want to find out what capabilities do we want to have, and then once we figure out what capabilities we want to have, then we negotiate around the fact that we want to have some capabilities. Since we don't have any capabilities, we don't have a hell of a lot of negotiating power, except that we have the you know money from the CARES Act. Thanks, Henry. Um, Michael? Um. First of all, about going into executive session and, and negotiating um, positions, I agree with everybody on that. I think some things have already been said that compromise our negotiating position. Um, and on the other hand, some of it needs to be said somehow, and it was. It's really important to distinguish, as some have already, between the VITA project and the CARES Act money. The VITA project is carefully thought out. We've already put months and months into feasibility studies, business plans, some designing, and much more will be spent designing it well. And that money will be CV Fibers money to borrow and CV Fibers infrastructure and CV Fibers customers, it's not one or the other, all of that will be CV Fibers. And CV Fiber will then generate revenue from that to pay back the bond or the loan. So it, it'll have to be that way. And with that, you do it right. You take your time, you design it well, you figure out how you're gonna integrate with other networks, whether our own or others. With, this, with the CARES Act money, we just don't have the luxury of any of that planning time, none. We are, what Alan was saying at the beginning is absolutely right. There's high risk that these projects won't be completed in time. And I already signed over half a million dollars worth of contracts under this CARES Act thing. And I'm not a praying guy, but I, 
figuratively pray every night now for an extension because it's going to be really, really hard for most providers to get their projects done by the end of the year. Um, there are so many obstacles we haven't even discussed tonight, like supply, material supply, contractors, everything. Everything is going to be hard to organize in time. Um, I'm comfortable talking about how we should negotiate, even though Cloud Alliance has been mentioned multiple times tonight. I don't expect that CV Fiber will send any money Cloud Alliance's way from the CARES Act. I think we, we in the Business Development Committee, pretty much put that on the bottom of the priority list. Um, and I frankly don't know if I could take on the assignment because of the commitments I already have. So um, otherwise, I would say I have a severe conflict of interest and I shouldn't be speaking about it right now. But I feel comfortable because I'm not buying for it. I'm not looking for that. I'm trying to figure out what's best for us right now. And um, well, maybe I've made all the points I need to make. Um, I agree with Chuck and Jeremy and Matt, and I and want to reiterate the thing I said at the beginning. If Waitsfield Champlain Valley builds in more town, they need to build to those places that are hard to get to. Otherwise, it is going to jeopardize the future project in more town. So now that's a that's a negotiating thing that we're saying out in the open, but I think it's just a given. I don't see how we can get away. It's, it's not right for more town. It's not right for CV fiber. So that's all. All right. Thanks, Michael. And uh, before we go to Jeremy, who's, who's next on my list, um, what, what do you think about a, a pr going and doing the nego these negotiations or not negotiations, talking about these negotiations of the contract in executive session, but we're going to, uh, we'll kind of stick kind of a bookmark in this, come back to it at the end of the meeting so that our executive session will be the end of the meeting. And that way, any folks that are attending that want to continue to attend like ORCA, they can, we can have some continuity rather than executive session and coming back. Is that, is that okay? Um, what, one of the things that we probably should do out of executive session before we go into, into that, uh, go and do that conversation is we should designate who is going to be on the negotiating committee or not, maybe not a committee, but if we designate one point person that can select you know one or two other point people to do this then we can have a, a similar sort of organization as we did with um responding quickly and um uh at with agility to anything that comes up um because again appointing a committee then requires um, warning of meetings and such but if we can appoint one person and that person can then loop in other people who want to be a part of the committee if that's acceptable i think we should do that but before we before we do that i want to make sure jeremy has a chance one point uh not committee negotiating team so t yeah well. like, but but even uh, even assigning a team creates a subgroup of this bot of this body and still triggers or it's it's not language we'll make one person the negotiating lead and then the negotiating lead will work with an ad, ad hoc group of other folks who want to work with them that way we're not creating a sub body and that does not that what person is responsible for for the negotiations yeah okay I, I thought they had said form a committee so that was anyways um probably just misheard anyway so my point was we're one of the things that I've noticed is that we're talking about both Waitsfield, Champlain Valley Telecom, and EC Fiber as you know as being treated in the same way when they're kind of different entities. You know, uh, EC Fiber is another CUD, and I guess that's you know. So I'd be a little bit more comfortable just sort of handing them the money, and they're a public entity, and they go build that area. Um, and I guess the other question is, can they just do that? If we just say, give them permission to build in, you know, wherever they want to build, can we do that and have them go after this money instead? And then 
offload the risk from us? I mean, they're a CUD, right? Right. Yeah, and there is a, but the, the idea here is that there is a per project cap or per CUD cap on these, these funds. They are already using some of it. I see, okay. Elsewhere. So we would be contracting with them to build in our territory. Now they can, because Roxbury is a, is contiguous to their territory, they can build there. That's, that's okay, they can do that on their own. They don't even have to ask us. But what we were trying to do was to supplement the sort of the projects that they're currently working on by having them build a project for us. And this is, and this has sort of similar, similar shapes to what, when we talked about uh, towns, you know, our member towns not being able to give us um, tax money, they could still contract with us. So I'm, you know, if we pick on, let's say, you know, city of Montpelier, city of Montpelier says we want CV fiber to build fiber here. They could, they could use that and they could hire us to do that as a contractor, just like they could hire any provider to do that as a contractor. Um, so again, this is, this is us trying to, trying to find a way to creatively use the CARES Act funding in a way that we can conceivably get this done by the end of the year. And we might get to a point in the negotiations where we're negotiating, going back and forth, and then we realize, oh, okay, well, time's up. It's, this is not going to happen anymore. Um, but I think we need to at least chase this as far as we can. So, um, sorry, so let's let's put a pause on this for a minute, Michael, unless it's okay. urgent, if it's related to negotiation, we should hold it till executive it's, session. No, it's no, it's it's related to Roxbury. Okay. I'm I'm glad EC Fiber's building there, but I, I take exception to your statement that well it's it's contiguous to them and if they want to build there, they can just do that. It seems to me that a CUD should ask a neighboring CUD if they can build in their territory, rather than assert, well, we're already building there, so let's finish it. And, and I think I've heard a little bit of that from them. Um, in Washington, we share that town, and that's so it's different. Roxbury is a CB fiber town, and we know they built a little corner of it because they had to get to another of their towns, but then they started building in another part of Roxbury without ever approaching us, and I just thought maybe that should be mentioned. Are you, they did approach us? So I, I've known for a while, and we have talked about EC Fiber having an interest. And I mean, they, they got a grant to study and do a feasibility study that included Roxbury. And that was a year or so ago. So. Well, I don't, I don't think the board ever voted on that. And maybe it was something that you knew about and discussed with them, but. Well, and so, I yeah, know, I mean. Part of and, our. Right. Well, and, and so, so in, in terms of legally whether they can or not, it's clear that they can under the CUD statutes. Whether they should without consulting us, that's that's a different question. I think they should. Um, I, I I don't know the, the scope and the scale of what they're currently doing there. I did know that there were folks served in Roxbury before we were even a, a district. Yeah. Um, and that was something that, you know, when I was having those conversations with Irv and Carol back in, you know, 2017, um, I knew those were there. So, but yes, I think in the future, if, you know, if we were to go and build, you know, up into what, Danville or something, right? Or Walden. somewhere else, up, right, Walden, yeah. perfect, perfect example. I, I wouldn't personally feel comfortable just saying, all right, well, let's, let's go, we, we can. But I think that we're going to have better results statewide if we are <laughs> better uh, better partnered than that. Okay, so let's let's keep this grant funding update and the CARES funding options item. Uh, let's kind of just kick this to the end of the agenda. Is there anything else that we need to talk about related to this though that is not um, um, that is not uh, negotiating contract negotiating stuff? I mean, somebody mentioned that we ought to identify who the negotiator is going to be. So maybe we should settle that. Sure. And somebody suggested in the uh, chat room that it be Tim. But that seems, um, that that's seems like a like reasonable person, and then he can consult with the various uh, 
the various people who've kind of already been involved in that already. Does that seem are you amenable I second to that? raise motion? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wonderful. I, I, I see your tricks, Chuck. Thank you for moving things along. Um, so uh, still though, Tim, you, you're okay with that? Being the lead on that? Yes, no, I feel like I'm already engaged and certainly be able to take the lead of helping uh, corral the right people to move the conversations along. Okay, so if you d decide that you wanna be a part of that conversation, uh, why don't you reach out to Tim directly? And then we'll make sure that when that, uh, you know, when we have that conference call or Zoom meeting, um, negotiating with whomever that uh, or you're able to be a part of that. Uh, anything else, David, on grants or funding or anything like that, or anything that folks want to talk about? Don't we need to vote on the motion? Oh, I, yeah, I suppose we do. Thank you very much, Mr. <laughs> Parliamentarian. Okay. Any any further discussion? My notes in order. <laughs> no, all good. All right. No further discussion. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? Abstentions? All right, motion passes unanimously. Thanks, everybody. Um, now, is there any other grant or funding updates, CARES money that you want to chat about? Ken? Uh, yeah, I think we need to do an equivalent, not because we're going to an executive session, but in terms of the canvassing activity, we talked about um, sole source and this, but, but but we do need to take some kind of positive action forward to to um, consider this, the content and process for doing the work that we're suggesting in um, applying to the Public Service Department. Okay, so um, maybe we, we wait on that one until that agenda item when we're talking about that specific contracting, unless it makes sense to talk about this in a kind of a bigger, in a bigger funding grant writing picture. That, is that okay, Ken? Cool. Um, there are, so I did get, um, I got a note from one of our fellow CUDs. I think it was from, hold on, I'll just go to it. It was from uh, Lamoille and uh, I, I'm not sure why she got it, but uh, um, Montpelier has the community fund board and there's, I think it's, it's like 125,000 can, I believe. This is the, the way that they get around having a whole bunch of people petition for money on the town meeting ballot. Um, if we thought we wanted to go after a smallish portion of that, I think we could apply for that and conceivably get it. Any thoughts about that, Ken? That'd be a tough, I mean, what, what, would, you, what would you suggest would be the benefit to the city of Montpelier and its residents? Uh, speeding up fiber deployment in the, in the region. I, I, I don't know. That's why I'm saying. Yeah, I, I, I just got the email. So. Yeah, no, it's it's interesting. But, uh, that would that would be a tough sell this year. I think as we get a couple of years and we start thinking about how Montpelier um, becomes more a part of the system, then it's worthwhile. But right now, really, we're helping a lot of the surrounding towns, and that'd be hard. Okay. Sounds good. And so don't forget also that we have the, the Vermont Community Foundation. We still, there is a, still a possibility of seeking some funding from them if we have a, if we have a project that we um, would like them to help with. Now that's going to be on the orders of, you know, a couple tens of thousands of dollars, but we have some possibilities there. And then there's some upcoming USDA grants also that um, are specific to broadband. And there's still the, the, USDA Rural Development, the Rural Business Development Grant that we got last time for the feasibility study and whatnot. We could conceivably go after funding for that for um, infrastructure and so on. I'm trying to think. And then uh, obviously we also can take another crack at um, the Northern Border Grant. Um, that's, but we're starting to look into next year. That wasn't in, you know, it wasn't in the budget, but uh, these are, I think these are things that we sort of need to keep, keep our eyes on. Uh, Jeremy, you had your hand up and then Henry. I was just wondering uh, when the, when the deadline is for like say the, the USDA grant um, or and some of the other ones. The rural business development grant I wanna say is March, March, April. 
something tor towards uh, springtime. Uh, the other one, I don't, let me see if I can find uh, USDA Rural Development, uh, what is it called? Community Connect Grant. Community Connect Grant, financial assistance to eligible applicants will provide broadband service in rural, economically challenged communities where broadband service does not exist. Must provide broadband of up to 25.3. Um, priority to those that demonstrate the greatest need. That's December 23rd. Yeah, that sounds right. So I can, here, let me chuck that in there. If anybody would like to spear um, another, another question is, do we have a sense of, I mean, because, I mean, speaking for myself, I'm overworked right now between personal stuff and all these board meetings. I mean, is there enough money in these and is the are, are the reporting requirements minimal enough that it's actually worth going after the money and using our you know limited volunteer time to do that well i expect the usda process it's, it's is going to, i expect the usda process is going to be um, the same amount of onerous as it was with the previous one I think this could potentially be a bigger grant. Um, so that might make it worthwhile. The, the, other, the other reason that we didn't end up using as much of the USDA rural development money as we did is that we found that there was easier state money to use that we used in its place. Mm -hmm. um, so. So Jeremy, so, RUS money is more onerous to deal with than regular rural development USDA money. And reconnect, I think, is under the RUS. The, so, community, the community connect grant is, is rural development. But reconnect is a different one, isn't it? That I, I wasn't talking about reconnect yet. We can certainly oh, talk okay. about that too. Okay. But if you know, but if there are folks that want to that want to spearhead this, or if you think that we need to go after this, we actually do have a a person contracted to help us do things and given that the uh december 23rd is before the end of the time that we have him with us if uh so maybe we can maybe tim if you'd like to take a look at that program and see if that's suitable for uh construction if we could use that as uh, matching funds or otherwise driving down our price of construction next year in the future yeah, and I did uh, listen to a seminar the other day on the USDA uh, Community Connect program. It, it, uh, you know, the application is pretty onerous, as you can imagine, from the federal government. Um, I think there's like up to 13 different schedules you have to fill out. Um, the one of the key provisions is you have to have a contiguous area drawn where no one has above um, 10 or one in that area. If they do, your whole application is thrown out. If they find one residence or business in that area, the whole application is thrown out. So it's the canvas. I don't know, um, you know, what resources are available to fit. That, that's, yep, sorry. Uh, that would be critical to, uh, to drawing the maps of uh, what area you're applying for. And that so, would be where you'd want to start. David, how does that sound? If we could, could we draw a contiguous area of underserved that would be of a size that would make sense? Probably, I mean, it, it's, um, it's pretty a squirrelless <laughs> criteria considering that we really don't know the exact name, but the canvassing might result in giving us that information. I. Um, I mean, there are pieces that, you know, when Fred did his feasibility work, he left off because they were too hard to reach and they weren't going to give us enough revenue to do it. But we could certainly build a little spiders off of the, the, the feasibility work to meet these criteria, I think. But it, well, it, and it, I mean, I just looked at it. It's up to $100,000 to $3 million. So it's not small money. Um, I don't know how many they're giving out, but. So, so that think, that might be yeah. They've oh, done about oh, oh. twenty-five million this round, I think, um, that okay. they were going to give out. 
So that, that might be a, worthwhile to make a call to Susie Poland or um, yeah. who's the head, who's the, who's the head guy of USD Rural Development, Vermont, spacing on his name. Anyways, um, we can we can find the information ben? that might. Pardon, Michael. Is it Ben or is he already? Yeah, ben wrong. Ben Doyle. Yeah. So it would be worth yeah, it'd be worth reaching out to Ben Doyle and see if that's if that's feasible. I mean, when we were exploring the uh, rural business development grant, um, yeah, we sat down with them and he said, "Here's all here's all of the the variables. Here's all of the <laughs> the options that are out there." It was a great meeting, and then we walked out with. A whole bunch of paperwork and then we applied so i think if it's if it's suitable or if some sometimes there's flexibility in these things that, that it's not like clearly advertised and uh he might be able to say yeah you know what this isn't this isn't really meant for vermont this is really meant for wyoming or something like that if there's some sort of insider picture we can sometimes uh it's not find that out Ben is now president of Preservation Trust. Oh, okay. Well, oh, good, good for him. Moving on up. Well, Su Susie Poland is is still there, and she's still um, the the nuts and bolts person at uh, you know with with those grants. So she would likely be um, she she'd be the person that, that I would go to first. Okay. Anything else on? I can grants? Uh, I can take that, Jeremy. Cool. Appreciate it, uh, Henry. Yeah, we saw uh, yeah, you um, on the list. Uh, I know we can't talk about it in this meeting, but you know the um, FCC auction is on the 29th to 20th today. Um, I, it would be interesting if, to hear what the progress is, maybe in the executive session or. You know, we, we, we we would have to have a separate motion for executive session. Um, I think you may just have to have to buckle up for a little bit longer. Um, okay. Anything else on grants or loans? Sorry, Henry. Okay. Moving along, let's go on to uh, hiring consultants for canvassing for writing the Memorandum of Understanding for Washington Electric Co-op and for building and maintaining the website. David, this is yours. Yeah, so I put these on the, I asked Jeremy to put these on the agenda so we could move this along um, as expeditiously as possible given the time frame on um, the grant. And so putting together, I think we had some discussion already from, from, uh, from Ray having a scope of work develop pretty quickly and get an RFP out really quick. The communications committee is meeting this week. I think we could do that. I think I'd like to get, you know, some delegation of, you know, we do that, we hire. I mean, you know, we're going to have a budget. We know how much it is. Maybe it'll come in less. I don't think it'll come in more because we won't have it. But to come back to the board, I don't know what we have to do. The procedure for spending money in this group is not all that clear all the time. Um, and we, we can spend a lot of time trying to figure that out. So that that's why I brought this up. Um, the time frame for you know hiring is is short. I think we all have a few people. I know one CUD in Southern Vermont has hired a web designer, so that I mean they're already familiar with what we need or what we could need. Um, but anyway, the communications committee is meeting this week, and I think. We should be able to do scopes of work on each of the items that we're looking for in terms of um, canvassing and web and marketing material and and making sure we stay consistent with what the CARES Act wants us to do, which is to identify what people's needs are relative to telehealth, uh, remote learning, remote work, et cetera. Um, so that's where that is. I don't know if there's any discussion on that. I'll talk about WEC separately um, since it's a separate item. Um, if anybody else want, Ken? In terms of the canvassing, I wonder if we can contact the Center for Rural Innovation that has a contract from the state to answer that question specifically in the next four to six weeks, which is what is the especially COVID-related change in demand for telecommunications? If we were to write a, a 
kind of concise focus for the CV Fiber District and say, hey, can you put extra emphasis in your work on our area? We'll give you another 10,000 bucks. You know, if Public Service Department says, we'll, you, we'll give you $10,000 to do that work, but then we get a product specifically for our people. What, um, what, kind, what kind of product are you talking about, Ken? Um, identification of addresses with very specific needs. Um, oh, I'm actually thinking of door to door or phone call to phone call kind of canvassing. I'm not talking about, you know, the best way to get real information from people. Yeah, well, maybe they'll do it. You know, if we. Yeah, no, I'm glad you brought them up because um, there's one other company that's ready to roll and they're another one that can do it. And there's probably some others locally that, are, that people are out of work. Um, it's gonna take a little bit of work to get this organized anyway, in terms of what is the message? What's the survey form look like? What are we gonna tell people we're doing? And when are, we, when are they gonna get it or not get it? Um, those kinds of questions need to be dealt with. Um, um, anybody else? Wanna? And it, it would be nice if they're going door to door, if we have a, a bit of short literature that we could hand out. Oh yeah, we have to prepare all that stuff. The messaging, maybe the t-shirts or whatever, we're gonna have people branding what we're selling or providing, we gotta, we gotta move along here. Yep. Ray? Yeah, so you may recall a month or so ago, maybe a little bit longer, uh, Rob, I think it was Rob who was poking the school districts to come up with the, the, where the teachers are and the students are that might need um, uh, connectivity. Uh, might we might we get access to that information that might help us with this process? Yeah, we have that actually. We have the whole list of all those addresses. Um, yeah. And I just did a run of addresses for Chuck and, and Tim the other day, yesterday, I guess. Um, Moving on to the WEC MOU, which we can also talk in the executive session. All the same issues we just went through on, on, on providers and how we actually relate to them. It's actually similar items that we need to have in an MOU with WEC, in which an MOU is not a contract. It's laying out the ground rules for how you go about doing contracting for services or vice versa. It's setting the ground rules between CV Fiber and WEC, you know, in terms of them owning the fiber on the poles, and then we're providing the quid pro quo is we're going to provide service to people in their territory. Um, so how we do that and, and make it um, work out for us and work out for them is is a critical piece of this. I've drafted um, an MOU. I'm not the best person for doing this because I do not have the financial uh, skills to say. Oh yeah, you gotta you better put some stuff in here on that and you know covering your the various things. EC Fiber has already drafted an MOU with WEC, um, and it's very brief and very to me doesn't cover enough for what I need to know or, or to protect CD Fiber. Um, but they're already operational. I mean, they already have a network. They're already running in 23 towns, so they know what they need from WEC. Um, where we're in a different position. I believe. And so I, I've submitted this thing to Jeremy and, and Tim for their comment and advice on how to move forward on it. Um, who, what kind of, you know, advice do we need to get from what kind of, you know, whether it's, you know, somebody like Fred or somebody like Peter Blum or somebody who's, you know, legal and financial in this field um, to guide us. So we're, we're making some good statements about how we want to work in the future. And I think some of this actually relates to the, you know, the, the, the other topic that we've been talking about today. Um, but they are moving along and they would like to get something soon from us. Um, I think probably by the next meeting, we'll have something we can, I don't know how we share it um, with the whole board, um, but somehow we need to get some, you know, action on it and resolve to, to make this happen. I'm looking actually, I, again, I'm sorry that Greg's not here tonight because I think Greg has a lot to offer on this topic. Um, and it would be useful if he could help us with this. So um, maybe to, to move this forward, if we look to authorize the Business Development Committee to, to do the 
to kind of manage the contracting and the and the RFP and or whatever for the canvassing for the MOU writing for the website is that if you had that David would that work so the uh, canvas that should all go to the communications committee so canvassing should go to the communications committee okay the website should go to the communications committee but the, yeah. the the WEC MOU is going to be business development. Yeah, business development, yeah. Okay. So let's um yeah, I'm I'm gonna sort of fly by the seat of my pants. I don't have this typed out, Jeremy. Apologies. I will um if somebody else can transcribe this as I'm as I'm reading it. I'm typing it down. Okay, I can hear you right now, it's just not a Okay, I I'll I'll go slow. I move that we authorize um, actually, you know what? No, hold on a second. How much are we planning on spending on um, the canvassing consultants? What's the not to exceed number? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> yeah, if we're gonna authorize money, we gotta kind of know. Yeah. Ditto, ditto website, ditto MOU. Yeah, and Chuck, did, if you have any Okay, okay. Did, um, the canvassing outreach was $60,000. And do we have that in our budget? I mean, is that in our the grant budget from the state? Yeah, that's what we're putting in. And we put all things, this is on Chuck's advice, we put all three things into one item. And the three items are um, information, understand the needs to educate our citizens, using information from other state resources, how to um, better communicate for the people, to tell people what's available to them. And, um, and provide the uh, buying uh, software to do the tracking of who's got what access to what service. And then my recommendation, take... Jeremy, would be to to mo move the full amount first, with then a breakout of the items that can be appropriated for after. Okay, so all right, let's let's try this. So so both so for this is just for the communications committee. For canvassing and the website, just those two items, not for the WEC MOU, correct? That's the sixty thousand. Correct. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to move that we authorize the communications committee to contract with whatever parties they need to uh, to to do canvassing and all of the previously agreed to outreach activities, including the website, for an amount not to exceed sixty thousand dollars contingent on the receipt of state funds and including a provision to claw back funds for, from those contractors for non-delivery. I typed as fast as I could. I didn't get all of it, Jeremy. I, Matt, I don't know if you got all of it, but uh, we may need to revisit starting at the second bullet point. I got uh, uh, whatever parties they need to, to one, do canvassing, two, uh, yeah, so website, so, so to do canvassing right. and and other outreach as as previously, I, I think it was, well, it was in the bid, right, or it was in the uh, yeah. grant. Yep. Um, yep. So to do outreach, uh, to do other outreach as described in our grant application, including website development. You also have the recording. Yes, that's true. But true. Yeah. Uh, Chuck wants to move with this tomorrow, and not have the recording. I imagine. <laughs> Second. No, hold on. I'm not done. I, I'm still re restating the, the motion. Okay, so you, you got the to do part, Chuck, right? I have no audio from you. To move to authorize the communications committee to contract with whatever parties they need to to do canvassing and other outreach as described in our grant application, including website development. Okay. Um, for uh, for an amount not to exceed sixty thousand dollars. Got it. Contingent on state funding and including a provision to claw back funds from the contractors in the event of non delivery. Got it. Okay. Now, Siobhan? Second. Thank you. Okay. Moved and seconded. Ray? Yeah, a couple of things. One is that uh, contracts are with the, um, 
the CUD, not with the Communications Committee. And my expectation is that uh, the Communications Committee may oversee this process, but uh, hopefully Tim is going to actually be the one who implements um, whatever, whatever it is they come up with. So if that changes your motion in any fashion, then uh, so be it. No, I mean, so so we're essentially, I mean, so it's not explicit, but we're authorizing the communications committee to act on on the behalf of the entire body. So, I mean, if if it feels like we need to to amend it to include that, then I'm happy to do so. Chuck, Tim is coming to all communications committee meetings uh, going forward. Um, I think that's going to be an important element of our success. Uh, if we want to make him a formal member of the communications committee to um, authorize him to run with certain elements we might not otherwise be comfortable with, I'm cool with that, but I'm also cool with the communications committee further delegating uh, responsibility to him if the board is comfortable with that. I, yeah, I, I don't think we need to, e to either add him as a, as a member with this, with this motion, if the communications committee figures out some things and wants to hand off pieces to him and he has the time in his schedule with our contract, then yeah, let's, I would say, sally forth. Um, any further discussion on this motion? Okay, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any, oppo any opposed? Aye. Okay. Any abstentions? Motion passes unanimously. Thanks, everybody. Now, um, David, for the WEC MOU, do we have a an amount that you would like us to authorize? I, you know, this is one that. Oops, am I on? Yeah. No, uh, this is one that we had money in the original one hundred thousand dollar grant to hire a lawyer for help. Um, so I, I would suggest that we use. I forget how much money that is. Seven thousand or six thousand. Not to exceed six thousand dollars if we need help for um, drafting this MOU into a format that's uh, legal and appropriate. Well, keep keep in mind though that 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 legal bucket was also for any legal review that we might have when we're drafting some of these other actual agreements sure. for the rest of the year. So we don't want to yeah. tear through the whole thing. All right. So so just to give you a, a sense of scope. Re reviewing the contract with Tim was a couple hours and was $500. So if we're asking them to do, um, if we're asking them to do like novel writing, act like actual writing of contractual materials or legal stuff, it's going to take quite a bit longer. So eight, eight yeah. hours. So if a full day is going to be a couple, you know, a couple thousand dollars. Yeah. No. Okay. Not to exceed three thousand dollars. I guess I don't know. Yeah. So I mean, any anybody have any thoughts about this one way or the other? Yeah, Ken. Yeah, I, I think this one is very, very important and does have a lot of variability to it. So I do think spending a significant portion of the six thousand is is appropriate. So I I would agree to go go three thousand and hopefully we. A lawyer would recognize that if that's enough money, and, and if not, has to come back to us. Okay, so I'm going to make a motion in just a second. I'm actually just going to modify the one that I previously made. We'll stand by for a second while I type furiously. Get ready to unmute and second, Siobhan. <laughs> you should just put me down. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll just put down. I vote that we kick Siobhan off the board. Put her down. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I stood by my own petard. <laughs> it's a lot of to be voted on the by the rest of the board, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's do. So move, um, move to authorize the business development committee to contract with whatever parties they need to produce a memorandum of understanding with Washington Electric Co-op for an amount not to exceed three thousand dollars, contingent on state funding and including a provision of clawback funds from the contracts 
that should be contractors uh, in the event of non-delivery. Second. And thank you for <laughs> thank you for that, Sean. <laughs> you, you are on it. Wo woe to anyone who tries to beat you to the second. All right. <laughs> I'm just trying to push us along. It's all good. Any other um, <laughs> any other discussion about this? All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? Motion passes unanimously. Thanks, folks. Um, anything else on on this for hiring folks? Um, and so, it, when you get invoices, if you can make sure that um, that I get those and I can I will write the checks. Um, and until we get our treasurer back, until she has more time, hopefully. Okay, moving along. Uh, let's go on to a uh, the October 13th, 2020 minutes. I move that we approve the October 13th, 2020 minutes uh, as presented. Second. Okay. Any edits or feedback for the minutes that Jeremy sent out earlier today? Do you want a minute to review everybody? Okay, I'm not hearing anybody screaming with pain. So any further discussion? Those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed or abstentions? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you again. Um, discussion of file storage. So we have we had a shared folder that has not been kept up to date in any format. Uh, we also had our um, uh, I don't I don't know where Jared went if he didn't get reappointed or something. Um, he was taking a lot of the stuff and was putting it onto the website as well. Uh, I don't know what happened to Jared. Anybody see or know Jared? Chuck? I, I don't know what's happened to Jared, but I do know um, he is still paying for our website, uh, or at least covering it out of his own infrastructure. Um, but I do have access to it, so I have been posting things like minutes and agendas and yada, yada, yada as well. Um, can't can't state I've done it 100% of the time, but I've been doing my best. Um, the uh, on the file sharing, we do still have that folder, and um, David and I, and and at least on the communications committee, we we've been leveraging Google Drive with a fair amount of success. Um, you know, I, I think it's still early for us to consider any sort of paid solution, although with the new pricing that Google has rolled out, a 20 member committee would be approximately 240 a month, uh, just, just for reference, and that would give us all the benefits of, um, you know, the, the infrastructure they have and the better privacy that they have of controlling it in a more enterprise manner. Um, that said, we, you know, if we do need to start looking at a paid solution, it would obviously behoove us to look around a little bit and see what other options there are, though most of my clients have settled on Drive in recent years. Um, as a public body, there may be some downsides I'm not aware of in, in leveraging that tool. And uh, I also know there may be some strong opinions against that particular provider um, amongst certain members of the board. So. Um, I just want to call out that you know we I think we can continue to leverage drive in the short term as we need to, but it is definitely something we'll need to revisit um, probably very soon. Okay, Jeremy. Can multiple people have access to drive? Um, you know, like say I get hit by a car and I'm the drive person, we wouldn't want to you know lose all that data or have to go through a huge hassle to get it back um and i guess the other thing is you know what, what's the process for getting people access to it because right now i've been storing all of the clerk files that i've been generating on the google drive associated with my cv fiber um, address um which again you know if i got hit by a bus you guys don't have access to that and well, you have to also, do the share ownership level privileges to anybody else you want to have access to it, and they'll get full read-write privileges and full copies within their own drive. So particularly those of us who've set up the CDB Fiber dot whatever town 
conventions so that there's continuity if we don't get hit by a bus but we do step down uh, and pass that on to the next delegate um, you know I think that's great but also Jeremy has the uh, Jeremy Hansen has the uh, Central Vermont internet address where he created the original folder that has a lot of stuff in it okay I mean I, I guess my one feeling on that is it's fragmented I've got stuff on my drive Jeremy's got stuff on his drive it's all here it's 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 here it's there it's it's everywhere not everyone has access to it tim was asking me about it and i was like well i don't have access to that i've heard it exists but i don't know where it is who owns it or anything like that um and i mean it's good that it's not lost if you give you know read write access but i don't know it i feel like even if we don't pay for something we should have just one place where we put this stuff and you know there's the clerk files that go there there's you know because i can share my drive with tim and i can share it with other people but again it's like you know six different drives and it's all over the place no one knows where anything is so i, I think it would be worthwhile doing something better what that is i'm not sure but so so uh, honestly and I, and I i don't mean this to sound terrible like super sarcastic or mean or anything but this sounds like <laughs> literally every job i've had ever well, like true yeah kind of stuff is is a little bit everywhere um i think what would be helpful is if we if we kind of maybe set some expectations about what sort of materials needed to go where and if we need to if we're going to continue using the drive so if we're putting minutes in there you know we should have an expectation of who who should have read access to those. Well, that's easy. Everybody, everybody in the world, we should have world readable, uh, full, a folder full of world readable, you know, agendas and whatnot. Um, but there's going to be other folders like um, maybe contracts that you know, are probably public records to, to a certain, I mean, all of this are public records to a certain extent. Um, but what are the things that we're going to be actively sharing with the world? And so business development committee should be shared among, you know, it should be a folder for them to share things. Uh, executive committee, not, I mean, not that we really meet or do anything, but maybe there's a, something we can do like that. But I think if somebody wants to sketch out, I, 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 I'm allergic to, to paperwork and bureaucracy. Um, so if somebody's willing to just sort of put together a rough like standard of practice right standard operating procedure whatever you want to call it to and say these things should be like this and then we can all endeavor to follow those and if you need access we'll just make sure that you get access and at least two people on each folder have admin rights so don't ride you know, don't walk cross the street together and be hit by buses simultaneously. Is that the, maybe that's the the, the, the takeaway? Um, but I'm but okay, Tom. I see you have your hand up. Um, and then there's some contracts or not contracts, but the feasibility study, the business plan. There's various other things that are not public access, and we need to have you know restricted access on those and be able to revoke access for those people who are no longer on the board. Um, and you know similar concept of, you know, who's got that, that admin privilege and so forth. That's true too, which, which I think is. Which, is that a problem right now? Do we have stuff on the drive that previous board members may still have access to? I can tell you that's, that's definitely the case. I mean, cause, cause I, I think this, some of these, I mean, there's, there, there's nothing in there that's sensitive. I think we're not putting anything in there that's going to be, um, stuff that we're going to want to redact so in, in in that sense even though we have old board members that presumably still have access to it i'm not i'm not too terribly worried about it um so i see siobhan posted a a service cloud words uh or is that just a, a review of it's just an article that lists several options for nonprofits to use for file storage if somebody wants to look into them Okay, so it's it sounds to me, and correct me if I'm wrong. It sounds to me like we like Google Drive is working okay. We just need to use it more regularly and in a more consistent way. Does that seem like a good move forward? If we decide that we need something more enterprisey or more space, um, just 
let's let's have an, let's have a item on the on an agenda in the future to talk about spending some money on that. I expect that we'll we'll probably get there. So Anything? can you give me uh, a link so that I to that so I can make a clerk folder on there and it's put officially in your yeah. box. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Chuck. <laughs> Chuck, you rock. You rock. Answer the questions before they're asked. And maybe send that to Tim as well because he was asking for access to that. He's got it as well. Okay. <laughs> You're a wizard. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. So, uh, David, did you have a. You're muted if you're saying something. No, I want Chuck to send it to me. Okay. Does anybody else want a link to the. To the folder. Okay. Excellent. So um, we are at the point of um, so we got the minutes, we got the file storage down. So we can do let's do a round table after our executive session. So we're back to this executive session. And so this is going to be a two parter where we have to find the premature public mm -hmm. knowledge, whatever. So I'll have a motion. Jeremy, can you and, yep. Go ahead. Um, since since I might be a party to the negotiations, I think I should recuse myself from the executive session discussing uh, any cloud alliance type projects. However, the other part, the WEC MOU, I would like to be part of the discussion. So I'm asking if we could bifurcate the executive session so I could attend the WEC part and then leave, if that's all right with everyone. Okay, so are are we going to have as part of this executive session a, a discussion of the WEC MOU? That wasn't it's my. It's not necessary. I thought, I thought I heard someone mention that before. I thought David said that he thought so that, that we needed to discuss that maybe an executive. Yeah. You're muted. You're muted. I think we can pass on WEC for now. Okay. okay, so then. So then I'm going to recuse myself and Jeremy can vote for Plainfield and and thank you everybody. All and right. We vote to go into. Thanks Michael. All right, so this is a this is a two-parter. So I'm I'm going to start by moving that we that CV Fiber finds that premature general public knowledge of our contract negotiation strategy would clearly place the public bot this public body uh, at a substantial disadvantage. Second. Second. Right, so because Michael that was, recused. <laughs> that was uh, seconded by by Jeremy, who is a who is a board <laughs> member. Briefly. Um, is there any further discussion? Okay. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed or abstentions? Okay. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. This next part is the actual going into executive session. I move that we enter executive session pursuant to, and I'm going to paste this into the chat as well. One VSA section 313A1A to discuss the contract and contract negotiations with potential ISPs. Second. Second. That's a, okay. That's that was a seconded. Canadian motion. Seconded by Josh, uh, M Michael. Pardon. It's a Canadian motion. If you read it, is it? Um, uh, yeah, A one A. Oh, <laughs> nice. A one A is also a, a highway in southern southeastern Florida. But okay. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye, Michael. All right. Any further discussion? All in favor of going into executive session to discuss the contracts and contract negotiation, please signify by saying aye. 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 And uh, who seconded abstention? that? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, who seconded that? I think it was Josh. Josh. Josh yeah. Okay. Thanks, Josh. Okay. Motion passes unanimously. We are in executive session. Uh, Orca. So we're going to go through this. Uh, Orca, I'm going to ask that you drop out of the meeting. We do not expect any any uh, additional action after this. Um, but we can send them a message when we come back if they want to capture our round table and adjournment. I'm going to stop the recording.
I'm going to give Orca a moment or two if they're listening. Otherwise, they may just be leaving this to record until they get kicked off. So I'm going to wait. Let's see. Ten more seconds. Can always hope that they're sitting here in thrall. While we're our... waiting, if anybody else wants access to the folder, feel free to ping me. Um, and just note that Google Drive has a really nice concept of being able to create a shortcut from one place to another. So if you have something like sitting in your personal drive, you can create a shortcut to it in the shared drive or vice versa. OK, so I'm going to dismiss Orca. Um, we, we should have had in that motion. I think we'll, everybody can uh, agree to it, though, because Tim is not technically a member of the board. We we actually have to uh, al allow him in. Is that OK for everybody as a friendly backward amendment? Wonderful. I'm dismissing Orca now. Thank you.